Can I have a motion? I move we approve the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? All opposed? All abstain? I was not there. Okay. Item two is the Ramshead subdivision amendment. Um, Ramshead Partners Limited Liability Company is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Ramshead subdivision located at the end of Charles Jordan Road, uh, I guess it was formerly known as Cod Rock Road and Windship Road, to replace a well water, con uh, to replace well water with connection to a four inch private water line for all four lots. The, the application will require review under section 16-2-5 amendments to previously approved subdivisions. Now this application has been placed on the consent agenda. So if a board member wishes to have a substantive discussion of the application, they would need to make a motion to move the application to the regular agenda. Otherwise, a motion for approval is in order. Does anyone wish to move this to the regular meeting? Okay, so can I have a motion? Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plan and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Ramshead Partners Limited Liability Company for an amendment to the previously approved Ramshead subdivision located at the end of Charles E. Jordan Road Cod Rock Road and Winship Road be repla to replace well water with a connection to a four inch private water line for all four lots be approved under section 16-2-5 of the subdivision ordinance as a consent agenda item. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Uh, the next item on the agenda is 51 Ocean House Road Resource Protection Permit. Jay Cox and Bill Royal doing business as Maxwell Cove LLC are requesting a private road approval and private access way permit for shared access for an existing lot located at 51 Ocean House Road and a new lot to be located at the rear of 51 Ocean House Road. They're also requesting a resource protection permit to provide a gravity sewer connection to the rear lot. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 197 private road and private access ways and section 198-3 resource protection permit. So we'll begin the applicant will uh, summarize changes made to the plan since the last meeting. Based on various input we received uh, after our first meeting, um, we've made some modifications. Um, the site plan was updated to incorporate the recommendations of Mr. Harding uh, via his memo of 11 March. Specifically, uh, the riprap in this area was modified slightly. There's now, uh, uh, I think it's two feet of riprap and then this area was widened into uh, slow water flow on the discharge side of the culvert. Um, all instances of Caden's Way on the plans have been changed to Caden's Way level in a positive to comply with the uh, town road naming standards. Um, this is the Rosendo property right here at the bottom. These five uh, Serbian spruce were added. This was what they requested to be done. There's about 40 feet of uh, evergreen buffering along the property line on this uh, site plan. <clears throat> and then on both plans, there's a short section of uh, setback set, set line added right here. There was a gap previously that's been corrected. And then there's a note there's a note added to uh, both plans stating that no building will, will be constructed outside of the building envelope. 
And then also a note uh, on both plans clarifying the uh, grandfather rights for this, uh, the location of the old building, that those expire uh, if there's been no uh, building permit full <coughs> two years date of destruction, uh, and only to the extent that it's actually used in, a, in any new building that's placed there. Uh, the, the turnaround was modified. This section was widened to uh, 40 feet, uh, no, to uh, 28 feet, I think. Yeah, 28 feet, I believe. Uh, to ensure that a, a, a B40 vehicle can turn here, keeping the wheels on the uh, gravel or pavement, or this ends up being. And also, this right of way was narrowed up slightly. Uh, and that was, that was reviewed by the town engineer and also the fire chief and uh, public works director. And also, uh, with, we clarified uh, our request for having the option of bringing the sewer to 77 or down to this, uh, uh, via gravity down to this sewer main to the southwest. Uh, and also, we are requesting a resource protection permit to go through through this wetland in this area if we decide to go that way. The, the decision on which way to go will be made at the time of construction. There's also uh, some additional changes that need to be made. Uh, Mr. Harding pointed out a couple more things that need to be done here, uh, and those will certainly be made before we proceed in any, in any way. And that's, that's really what I have for tonight. I'm ready to answer any questions. Are you requesting that those changes be conditions, or are you planning to come back? No, I prefer to see those as conditions. Okay. We'll get that cleaned up and, and uh, deliver to the top. Okay, thank you. That's it? That's it. Okay, uh, is there anyone from the public here to speak on this issue? Nope, okay. Um, seeing no one here, I will close the public hearing. All right, does any member of the board have any questions for the applicant? Nope, uh, I have one. Can you uh, just specify what those items are, or is that? in our packet somewhere that I missed. The town engineer's comments? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the request to add to the conditions. Those would be on, it should be included in the back of the memo, uh, letter dated April 10th. Did you include it in the conditions of approval? Um, in the conditions of approval, uh, the first condition states that the plans be revised to address the town engineer's comments in the letter dated April 10th, 2019. Okay. great. I do have a list if you want me to go through them. Do you guys want to hear it? Uh, it might be, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's hear it. So on the original uh, plan, we had a note that any connection to the sewer in 77 would be with the approval of the public works director. And we, modif we, we will modify that to state that regardless of which way we go, the connection will be acceptable to the public works director. Um, so that was one. And then there is a reference on, I have to look and see if it's the site plan or the plan of Caden's Way. But there, dewatering? Well, there's actually um, one of, on the plan of Cadence Way, there's a reference to note 11, but there's actually two note 11s. So uh, we'll specify survey note 11, just to, for clarification. Um, and then the name Cadence Way, sorry about this. So Cadence Way will be written on the, uh, on the road that's missing here on both plans. 
and uh, dewatering those in details uh, on the site plan. In the construction notes, we'll add dewatering de notes to clarify how this will be dewatered if the trench is dug that way. And then that was that's the list that I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Would somebody like to make a motion? Charlie, we have just in, in, uh, one aspect was that uh, this was here last month for a. Uh, Motion on or a motion on completeness, and I think at that time I think it was uh, uh, Member uh, Caroline Jordan who commented on the uh, the thoroughness of the application at that time, and since that time we've also uh, received these new materials and taken a site walk. Um, so based upon that, uh, I have some findings of fact for the uh, motion for the board to consider. Uh, J, uh, number one, Jay Cox and Bill Royal, Royal doing business as Maxwell Cove LLC are requesting private road and private access permit approval for Cadence Way to provide access for two lots located at 51 Ocean House Road and a new lot to be located at the rear of 51 Ocean House Road as well as a resource protection permit for up to 500 square feet of temporary alteration to an RP2 wetland to provide a gravity sewer connection to lot two which requires review under section 19-7-9 private road and private access ways in section 19-8-9 three resource protection permit number two cadence way will not result in undue water pollution the private road is not located in a 100 year floodplain soils uh, will support the proposed uses the slope of the land proximity to streams in the state and local water resource rules and regulations will not be compromised by the construction of cadence way number three cadence way will not cause soil erosion based on the erosion control plan provided number four cadence way will not cause unreasonable road congestion or unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic Cadence way provides the road network connectivity while discouraging through traffic Cadence way is laid out to conform to existing topography as much as is feasible Cadence way is designed to meet town standards which waivers granted for a right of way reduction from 50 feet to 35 feet and a travel way reduction from 22 feet to 14 feet with two feet wide shoulders the waivers are granted because a private road will serve no more than two lots and the waiver will allow the scale of the development to be more compatible with the adjacent neighborhood. Number five, Canes Way will not have an undue adverse impact on scenic or natural areas, historic sites, significant wildlife habitat, rare natural areas, or public access to the shoreline. Number six, Canes Way is compatible with applicable provisions of the comprehensive plan and town ordinance. Number seven, the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. Number eight, Canes Way will not adversely impact surface water quality. Number nine, Canes Way will not adversely impact the quality or quantity of groundwater. Number 10, Canes Way is not located in a floodplain. Number 11, Canes Way is in compliance with the town wetland regulations and the zoning ordinance. Number 12, the design of Canes Way will provide for adequate stormwater management. Number 13, Cadence Way is not located within the watershed of Great Pond and therefore will have no impact on phosphorus levels. Number 14, Cadence Way is not located on land where liquidation harvesting was conducted. Number 15, Cadence Way will include access to utilities. Number 16, the Cadence Way private access way shall provide access to more than one dwelling unit and related accessory buildings and uses. Number 17, the Cadence Way private ac access way shall be located within a dedicated right of way having a width of 30 feet. Number 18, the sub base shall be constructed with gravel meetings, uh, excuse me, meeting uh, MDOT um, specification 703-06 type D with a depth of at least 15 inches and having a width of at least 18 feet. Number 19, the travel way shall be constructed with a minimum of three inches of crushed gravel having a width of at least 14 feet with the remaining width of gravel base loamed and seeded. Number 20, within 10 feet of the edge of Ocean House Road, the private road portion of Cadence Way shall be paved with three inches of asphalt paving. The maximum grade within the first 50 feet of the edge of the street paving shall not exceed 5%. Pavement radius at the intersection with the street shall be 20 feet. Number 21, gutter damage, gutter drainage, excuse me, 
along Caden's Way shall be allowed to sh uh, sheet across the face of the intersection with Ocean House Road and the proposed design uh, will keep drainage from the private access way from running into the public street. Number 22, a turnaround is proposed to meet the requirements of the fire chief. Number 23, Caden's Way is located so that site distance conforms to requirements of the subdivision ordinance. Number 24, the Caden's Way private access way shall serve only one lot. Number 25, the planning board has not reduced the private access way requirements of section 197-9D4 to a lesser standard, number 26, adequate disposal sewage shall be provided as evidenced by connection to the public sewage system. Number 27, the building envelope is depicted wherein the house and accessory buildings will be located on the lot demonstrating conformance with the setback requirements of the district in which it is located in any natural constraints and that the house site will be buffered from abutting residential properties. Number 28, the temporary wetland alter alteration will not material obstruct the flow of surface or subsurface waters across or from the alternation area. Number 29, a temporary wetland alteration will not impound surface waters to reduce the absor absorptive capacity at, of the alteration area so as to or increase the flooding of adjacent properties and should include temporary dewatering measures during construction. Number 30, a temporary wetland alteration will not increase the flow of surface waters across or the drainage of surface waters from the alteration area so as to threaten, injure, uh, threaten or injure or as to threaten injury, excuse me, to the alteration area or to upstream and or downstream lands by flooding, draining, erosion, sedimentation, and uh, or otherwise. Number 31, the temporary wetland alteration uh, will not result in significant damage to spawning grounds or habitat for aquatic life, birds, or other wildlife. Number 32, a temporary water alteration will not pose problems related to support structures. Number 33, a temporary wetland alteration will not be detrimental to aquifer recharge or the quantity quantity or quality of groundwater. Number 34, the temporary water alteration will not disturb coastal dunes or uh, contiguous uh, back dune areas. Number 35, a temporary wetland alteration will not, uh, will, excuse me, will, uh, will maintain or improve ecological or aesthetic values. Number 36, a temporary wetland alteration um, Will, uh, excuse, hold on, Sam. Will be. Yeah, well, okay, that, thank you. <laughs> will be restored uh, with an adequate buffer area between the wetland and adjacent land uses. Number 37, a temporary wetland alteration uh, will be accomplished in conformance with the erosion prevention provisions of environmental quality handbook, erosion and sediment control published by the Maine Soil and Water Conservation Commission dated March 1986 or subsequent revisions thereof. Number 38, a temporary wetland alteration uh, will be accomplished without discharging uh, wastewater from buildings or from other construction into wet wastewater treatment facilities. Excuse me, okay, I'm gonna bring that back. Uh, temporary wetland alteration will not be accomplished without, uh, let me, will. Yeah, will, be. will be accomplished. Into waste and yeah, will be. Yeah, will be. Okay, will be accomplished without discharging wastewater from buildings or from other construction into wastewater treatment facilities in violation of section 15.1-4 of the sewage ordinance. We might need to revisit that one, but, um, and 39, the application substantially complies with section 19-7-9 private roads and private access ways and section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. So did I read that number 38 uh, correctly? Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, so therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jay Cox and Bill Royal uh, doing business as Maxwell Cove LLC for a private road and private access way permit, approval for Cadence Way to provide access for two lots located at 51 Ocean House Road and a new lot to be located at the rear of 51 Ocean House Road, as well as a resource protection permit for up to 500 square feet of temporary alteration to an RP2 wetland to provide a gravity sewer connection to lot two be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the plans be revised to address the town engineer's comments in the letter dated April 10th, 2019. And number two, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the plans have been revised to address the above condition. The plan has been signed by the planning board and recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds and a performance guarantee has been posted. 
right. We have a second. Um, I actually have a question. And then I have a question too. Uh, I don't know if Do you have a question? What do you say? She's seconding the motion. The motion. Now we can talk about it. Oh, okay. I didn't know what the order was. So um, do, let's. Sorry. You have a question or comment? Uh, it's a probably a comment slash question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the comment is 16. I suspect you may have picked up on this too. You said Kingsway Private Access Way shall provide access to more than one dwelling unit. It should I be shall. Believe. No more than one shall not. Shall, shall not, not provide, right? So you need to ask him. <coughs> Are you willing to accept that amendment to? I, uh, Andrew, I thought about it and I am. Okay. And I am also okay with it. Because I, I saw that that was my same question. Um, and actually then I have a further question from sure. Maureen and maybe this, so if it's private, I should look back at this and maybe you did the private, there's a private road section that can handle two. Is that, what is that referred to as in this? There, the. <laughs> When you, it's basically a shared driveway. So the section from Ocean House Road, 75 feet in, is private road. Right. And then beyond that point, there's an additional 135 feet, and that's approved as a private access way. Right. So I was just wondering, what the, so just the end part is the Cadens Way private access way, and the first part is just Cadens Way? Okay. Yeah, the, the name of it's going to be Cadens Way. Okay. It's just the type of approval that you're granting. Right. It's a private road approval for the first part, right. and it's a private access way for the back end. Right, so the but private access way refers to the private access way extension of Cain's Way. So I'm, I'm just trying to make sure the language makes sense in here, and I, I think it does, so. Okay. That was my same comment. Okay, any further questions? Oh, All? thank you. Maureen. Number 21. Gutter drainage along Cadence Way shall be allowed to sheet across the face of the intersection or shall not be allowed. I'm going to say I think it, it should not. be shall not. not. not I think it shall not. I missed that one. Because it would have to sheet uphill. So <laughs> the motion maker needs to accept a friendly amendment, is not for me, but for somebody right. else. Does somebody have a friendly amendment? I don't think more. I have you can't a friendly do it. amendment to it. number 21 to change it to gutter drainage along Cadence Way shall not be allowed to sheet across. Well, can the we person second. seconded my motion make that friendly amendment? Oh. Okay. And I, I second that. Okay. okay. <laughs> I accept it. Thank you. I missed it too. All right. Mr. Bunch. Is that it? I do. Let me make sure I didn't mark any others. That's a pretty long. It's a long list. Long, huh? long thing. Somebody did Good, a very well nice job. Good job, Jonathan. <laughs> we, let, we let Jonathan read them like all. Like no, we're good. I'm good. Okay, everybody, set. All right, all in favor? It's unanimous. All right, the next item, Ocean House Common Village Green Development. David S. Jacobson is requesting site plan review and a resource protection permit for Ocean House Commons, a 7,144 square foot mixed use office, two apartment unit building and Village Green located at 326 Ocean House Road and a resource protection permit to fill 3,500 square feet of RP2 wetland. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19.9 site plan regulations, section 19.64 town center zoning and village green requirements and section 19.83 resource protection regulations. Um, we'll begin by having the applicant introduce himself and summarize any changes made uh, since our last meeting. Thank you. John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates, uh, representing Dr. David Jacobson uh, for Ocean House Comment. Could you aim that microphone more towards you? There we go. Um, 
what we'd like to, the format that we would like to, to do this evening um, would be, first I'm gonna just give a quick overview of the project, bring, it, bring everybody up to date. Um, secondly, we want to present the plan revisions as of the last meeting that we met, the completeness meeting. Then have a discussion on the latest staff comments, followed by uh, Steve Bradstreet, who's here this evening to talk about uh, the DEP meeting that was held <clears throat> and uh, to talk about stormwater management. And then finally to have Matt from Mark Mueller Architects uh, give a short presentation on architectural uh, revisions. So, um, beginning with the quick overview of the project, uh, this of course is an aerial uh, photograph of the site with the town hall on the left and Cape Elizabeth Land Trust on the, on the right and uh, vacant wooded land surrounding the back portion of the property. Uh, let's see. Um, this is a copy of the uh, boundary and topographical survey of the property. Uh, with one foot contours, you can see that it, uh, the topography uh, drains from Ocean House Road uh, down towards the low point. Um, same thing is true from uh, the town hall property flows down towards the low point. And then this portion of the property, the, the southerly portion of the property, uh, there's about a nine foot grade change in this direction flowing in this down to the low point of the property. Uh, this is the town hall over here. This is the land trust. Let's see, can we, how do we move this up a bit? You know how to move it up, Steve? Maureen? Uh, type tools in the top corner. Tools. That's good, that's good. Always enlarged. Okay, yep, thank you. Um, this is a, a graphic on the overall master plan. I believe that you've seen this at the last meeting. Uh, Ocean House Road here. Um, we're coming in, uh, the main access road comes in opposite uh, Jordan Way and circles around and connects to the town hall parking lot. Um, we are in the master plan, there are four structures all under 5,000 square feet. Uh, this is uh, Dr. J David Jacobson's building located here, which will be phase one of the master plan. Uh, the village green is located here. It's a 20,000 square foot uh, parcel that will be deeded, deeded to the town. And this is uh, the existing vegetated buffer. Um, it's a 100 foot wide buffer, um, a, uh, which cannot be disturbed. Great. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, this is a copy of the, <coughs> the layout plan uh, that, or actually the site plan for phase one uh, that shows the uh, proposed building. There'll be the dentist practice will be on the first level and there'll be two apartments on the second level. Um, access will come in. There'll be a, tw a, 20, a total of 20 parking spaces to serve this building and the village green. Uh, will be constructed uh, during the phase one development. 
Um, so I just wanted to, uh, for the benefit of the planning board members, I wanted to uh, just go down the list. I believe there are nine items uh, that were um, changes to the plan since the last planning board meeting. Number one, uh, additional plantings have been uh, put on the uh, site plan for phase one, uh, both for aesthetic purposes and for screening purposes. Uh, we added one additional parking space. Uh, we had 19 on the initial submission. We've added one, which will make it 20. We've shifted, uh, there's a section right here that we had two or three parking spaces. We have removed those because they were in the area of the wetland impact. Uh, we removed existing vegetation existing vegetation along um, the northerly property line abutting the town hall. Uh, this was requested by town staff, so we removed that vegetation. Uh, street, tree, tree, street tree plantings, uh, the, the species have been changed to, uh, there are uh, American hawk beam, uh, which is located, which are located along Ocean House Road. And then we have black gum, which again is, is a medium-sized deciduous tree that sort of reinforces the pedestrian walkway in the village green. We have raised the grade um, approximately one and a half feet in this area here. We've sort of terraced it, we've feathered the grade down, um, and, but raised the, the grade uh, in, this, in this open lawn area. We've increased the width of the sidewalk along Ocean House Road from five feet to six feet. The site distances have been added to the, uh, to the layout plan. And finally, we've addressed all of the comments uh, outlined in Steve Hotting's uh, letter regarding uh, details. Those are the plan revisions. Um, and uh, next, I wanted to talk about the uh, addressing some of the recent comments that we've received. Can I just clarify? Are you saying that the changes are not, these changes are in our packet or not reflected in the packet that was handed out? They are in your packet. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the recent changes have not been included in your packet, but I wanted to. <laughs> The ones you're enumerating now. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure how the board wants me to do this. I can go down one by one. There are several. Um, or I can sort of summarize. <laughs> summarize, I think. Is okay. Summarize. Uh, okay. Uh, well, all of the comments uh, have been addressed. Uh, there, were, there, are, there were a couple comments that uh, were asked to be added to the plan. The, the uh, footprint of the building has been labeled on the building. Um, a letter requesting confirmation of sewer capacity has been sent to uh, Steve Harding and we're waiting for his response. Um, all of the plans have been stamped and sealed. Um, there were um, a few comments regarding details, all of those site details, uh, mostly utility questions or uh, comments. All of those have been um, addressed. Um, the temporary surface treatment of the areas, what we're proposing to, as you can see, clear the vegetation for the future building sites. And Steve wanted us to um, label how that surface treatment is going to be treated uh, during phase one. And our response is that a reclamation grass seed mixture will be placed in those, in those areas. Um, a, traffic, uh, a traffic comment, uh, a note has been added to, the, to this sheet, L2, uh, indicating that additional studies will be conducted as future build out um, scenarios proceed um, to, uh, 
to ensure that the project will not uh, uh, will not trigger um, MDOT uh, traffic moving permit. Um, There's a lot of comments that I'm gonna allow Steve Bradstreet to comment on, a lot of comments pertaining to stormwater that I'm gonna let Steve. But again, um, all of the labels and dimensions and notes and details have been, have been addressed and uh, the next set of plans will, uh, will show all those. Okay, so um, I'm going to let Steve uh, talk about DEP. Thank you, John. Steve Bradstreet with Ransom Consulting. Um, what I want to sort of highlight is that the the area that There's the uh, grading plan um, that was created for the stormwater management and uh, the initial stormwater management plan uh, had uh, detention uh, for water quantity and uh, some water quality measures in there with focal points and filtration swales to uh, allow for uh, water quality and water quantity uh, control. The um, town asked uh, suggested uh, that uh, instead of detaining um, stormwater on site, uh, that we consider connecting directly across the street over to the town storm drain system at the intersection of Jordan Way. Um, in doing so, uh, knowing that this uh, build out of this uh, entire development would trigger DEP stormwater, because it will be over uh, an acre of impervious area, uh, we felt it was necessary that we have a meeting with uh, DEP. So we had a meeting with DEP, uh, with Steve Harding and Maureen, uh, to discuss the permitting requirements uh, for the site on future build out that would trigger the one acre of impervious area. Uh, we came away from the meeting uh, with the DEP indicating that if the town accepts the stormwater quantity into their storm drain system that was accept acceptable to DEP. Um, the water quality still had to be maintained on site, uh, so we had to still provide the stormwater measures on site to uh, clean up the stormwater prior to it discharging to uh, the town storm drain system. So what that meant is we eliminated the detention and we provided uh, two or a number of stormwater uh, runoff quantities to Steve Harding, uh, indicating what flows the town could expect to see in that storm drain system. Then uh, Sebago Technics, Steve Harding, uh, will be running uh, the calculations because in the 1995, uh, stormwater management study of this area, uh, they had run all the quantities down to the outlet into the marsh. Uh, so they had all the uh, calculations and everything. They will be inputting our data to see if there's any bottlenecks downstream, to see if there's a small pipe, uh, a two flat of a pipe, uh, et cetera, that would potentially prevent us from outletting into that system. Um, but right now, uh, based on, and that calculation has been done and, and it's been indicated that it may not be done until uh, <coughs> September sometime. But phase one is just this, and we're looking to uh, be able to tie phase one, uh, tie the whole system in, designed for uh, future development, but for phase one to be able to tie in uh, to the uh, town storm drain system. The flows are obviously a lot less than if we had the entire development um, uh, built today. So that's what we're looking for. We'll still provide all the stormwater quality measurements. We'll uh, address uh, the town's concern of moving the filtration uh, swales 
off of the town's property that was collecting water uh, from the town's parking lot, still providing the quality uh, protection there, um, but moving it off uh, so that when the town plows the parking lot, the snow is deposited on the town's property, it melts and it goes into the filtration swales. Uh, the town will also uh, maintain those filtration, filtration swales with a maintenance agreement from the applicant. Um, so that was a, uh, the major uh, change in the plans is the uh, elimination of the detention, but we need to make sure that uh, the town's storm drain system will be able to accept that. Um, and based on what I had looked at, the sizing of the pipes and everything, it appeared that it would, at least on the upstream side of the uh, storm drain system. But uh, the uh, Sebago Technics will be evaluating that uh, and determining that for the larger events and for phase two. So what we're looking at is allowing it to contain to continue to deposit into the uh, town storm drain system at Jordan Way for uh, phase one. <clears throat> so that was the major uh, stormwater difference in what we're projecting here with this plan, showing that it's plateaued down to the bottom, still showing the uh, stormwater quality, um, and also shifting of the filtration swales onto mm -hmm. the town's property. Those are the major issues. Uh, there were a number of individual specific uh, questions or comments that uh, Mr. Harding made, and all those are being taken care of. It's just a matter of um, looking at the stormwater downstream and evaluating that. If there's any questions on the stormwater, I'm happy to answer those. Um, does anybody have a quick question? Is Me? It's just a cl clarification at this point. We'll have questions after the hearing, public hearing. Uh, no. Yeah, I'll leave it for after. Sure. John? So, so there was a mention, um, and I'm not sure if it's is, uh, with regards to the fill, um, when we were on the sidewalk, there was talk about sort of regrading everything at the level, but then I think uh, Mr. Mitchell mentioned something about uh, just grading it up a foot. A foot and a half. So, would that still result in a dip from the village green down to that area? It, okay. it would be terraced, so it would be uh, still dropping from what was proposed on the village green. It would be terraced down to another uh, elevated or terraced area. Yes. Okay. And what what would be the difference between those two levels? Don't mean to put you on the spot. I'm no, just, no, I'm you... just uh, trying to read it. Four to five feet. Five. Okay. Feet. Yeah. All right. So it'd be four to five feet higher in this scenario? Four to five feet higher up towards Route 77, four to five feet lower okay. as you get back into the property. All right, we can get into the weeds after. Does anybody have any other? Well, no, I asked that because of I know that the discussion with regards to the stormwater had to do with the whole area being leveled and okay. so, right, thank you. All right, and do you have anything else? Oh, yes. Good evening, uh, Matt Provencal from Mark Mule Architects. Uh, just wanted to briefly talk about the architectural changes and a couple of the notes and comments we received. Um, I guess the one of them uh, that's applicable, we, we will add the building height to the elevations. Um, it's roughly 27 feet given the average grade. Um, as a gentleman here, I've talked about the grade kind of falls off in the back there. Uh, so it's roughly around 27 feet. Um, the, uh, another comment, um, the exterior materials you see, we had a kind of this graphic presentation here. Um, Horizontal siding with some shingle motif, um, kind of this, you know, two material um, idea here. Material-wise, we're thinking a hardy, something you know, durable um, that'll hold up, good high-quality product. Um, it it wouldn't, you know, some of the products you can have that wood grain to it, and they get a little kitschy. Um, so don't, we're not quite thinking that, but maybe a smooth finish. 
Um, the other the other one uh, to talk about is the the opening requirement, um, the equal um, ratio of wall to opening. So we've you can see the elevation here. There's there's good dimension. There's good scale and proportions. Um, right now, the that, that requirement of the front elevation, we're at 45 percent. Um, given the use, what's happening that the front you know gable. That's the lobby, it opens up, it's vaulted. Um, there's some higher windows you can see kind of peeking around the corner, that opens to below. Um, and then towards the, the side elevation there, there's offices or treatment rooms um, around and we've, we've really loaded that up with windows as well. So it, given the, the layout of this, we have that opportunity to add more glazing around the corner. Um, so we've felt that given that situation and adding this more, um, that we've really kind of balanced this equal proportion of, of wall to um, to openings. So again, we're, we're right around 45%, but we've, we've provided 45% at both the front and that side elevation there as you drive and approach the building. Um, so that's where we've, um, that's where we're at right now. Um, you know, trying to balance what's happening on the inside with, with the exterior there being a, a dental office and equipment and, and so on and so forth. Um, I believe that's I believe that's all architecturally. If anyone has any other comments or questions? Any quick questions? You think parking questions? Did we last time, or is that in a different? Let's see so the hearing and then come back to that. So that um, that concludes our presentation, and we'd be glad to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. All right, um, is there anybody here from the public? Is there anybody here to speak on this uh, application? Okay, great. I will now open the public hearing. Please walk up to the uh, lectern, state your name, your dress, and um, you have three minutes to speak. Uh, thank you. My name's Nate Tuthaker. I'm here on behalf of Fieldwinds LLC. It's the owner of 336 Ocean House Road. Um, it's the owner of the property benefited by the buffer zone easement. And Fieldwinds just has a question about the effect of the proposed development on the buffer zone. Uh, Fieldwinds would like to know uh, whether the proposals for 326 Ocean House Road will affect the easement zone and the vegetation in and around the zone. In addition, it would be helpful to understand the steps in place to ensure there's no environmental contamination from the dental practice, uh, such as mercury, in order to protect the soil and water in the area. Okay. Great, thank you. Hi, I'm Suzanne McGann, 1180 Shore Road. Um, I was just I was reading through the information. I just wanted a little clarification. The minutes from the last monthly meeting, planning board meeting stated that the vernal pool that's on the property has been evaluated and considered a non-significant wetland. Um, I was just wondering who had made this determination and where is that document documentation? I can't find it online. Um, I was also curious about the, the drainage as well. I know that they addressed some of the questions that were brought up at last meeting, but I was wondering if this area that's in front of the building, if it's being, is it continued to be sloped down towards, so will the water be flowing into the land trust property or will it be captured and um, as stormwater? Also, in the notes from last time, it said there was a 15-wide strip buffer on the south side, which it looked like um, from one of the previous pictures. But then when I also read the minutes, it stated that the entire area will be cleared of trees. So there seemed to be a little inconsistency. I was just wondering if you could address that as well. Thanks. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Zeb Meyerowitz, uh, resident at 12 Hill Way. Uh, I'm here just to uh, lend my support for the development. Um, I think it's, there's been a lot of thought that's been put into it. It's very methodical in its, in its procedure, and I think it's trying to be as conscious as it can to the adjacent lots. Um, as somebody who went through this a couple years ago, it's not very easy to get a development in the town of Cape Elizabeth that can satisfy all parties. I think the best that we can do is try to move forward in, in a big fashion. And you know, I, I do support making sure that we address the environmental concerns that have been previously mentioned. Um, but I think this is a, a giant leap of faith um, on behalf of, of Dr. Jacobson. And he's, he's putting his neck out here to attempt to, to develop not just his own individual practice, but to move forward with the goals that the town center committee had put forward with a, um, a town village green, which I think is being established here. Um, and I think we need to keep that, you know, we need to be very conscious of, of the fact that we have a, a local resident and business owner who has a thriving practice that's centric to Cape Elizabeth, serving the members of Cape Elizabeth. And we need to be conscious in helping to, to nurture and grow that. Um, living here for almost a decade at this point, we have various issues of, of a lack of support from, from businesses in terms of income. Um, every time that we have a budget crisis, it always gets passed to local um, property owners. Uh, further development within the established town center zoning helps to ameliorate that. Um, additionally, I believe, and Maureen may be able to correct me, but I believe that this is also within the TIF district. Is that correct, Maureen? So, you know, this development really does uh, a good good potential in, in gathering funds that will have state support in, in redeveloping the infrastructure. And so, you know, we all we all like to we're all a little reluctant to change, um, but I think this is really tastefully done. Thank you. I didn't catch your name. Zeb Myrowitz. Thank you. Resident of 12 Hill Way. Yeah. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Okay, seeing no one, I'm closing the public hearing. Um, let's try and take care of these questions from the public. Uh, so I guess the first one is uh, regarding the environmental quality and possible mercury contamination, other chemicals from the dentist's office. Uh, the state has strict guidelines for medical offices and certainly dental where we use, if we're there are amalgam separators, there are many systems in place to filter waste that comes from my evacuation lines. It'll get separated, filtered out, separated from any wastewater. So I'll comply uh, or go above and beyond what the state mandates for in terms of uh, uh, those kinds of protections. So pretty standard. Uh, Maureen wants to interject. So just so we're clear, there are no wastewater lines leaving our property that are not going to be connected to the public sewer. Correct. And if you were inadvertently discharging anything, you would be in violation of the sewer ordinance because it would be going into the sewer line, it wouldn't be discharged out the back. Correct? Okay, the next question was regarding the vernal pool evaluation and whether or not uh, that can be found online or some location. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, Lauren Starkwell of Starkwell Environmental Consulting uh, did the evaluation delineation of the wetlands in April 21st of 2016. Uh, it was it was determined that it was not a vernal pool, um, and uh, it can be found in Exhibit 4 of our application, her, her report. Okay, Maureen. I just want to make clear that the town does not post online the applicant's submissions. 
It's an enormous amount of information. We don't have the ability to store it. So what we post online are the agendas, the minutes, and the reports generated by town staff. So anything that's been submitted by the applicant is available for review in the town office. And the report that Mr. Mitchell has referenced is right in here. Um, so anyone could come and take a look at it. You should probably also, I'm going to look at Mr. Bradstreet, that was also noted at the meeting we had with DEP, and they also they also confirmed that that what was there was not a significant vernal pool, and the state only regulates significant vernal pools, so it did not have the minimum number of egg masses needed under state law to to qualify for protection under state laws of vernal pool. It was also a question, Suzanne also asked the question about uh, clearing, site clearing. Um, any area outside of the building envelope uh, will not be cleared. Uh, the vegetation along the uh, northerly, I'm sorry, the southerly property line, there's a 15 foot setback <clears throat> um, abutting the land trust property. Uh, that vegetation will be preserved. Uh, she also asked that whether water was flowing into the land trust from the site. No, I mean all, all of the water is going to be captured, and um, I mean there may be there may be some runoff from that 15 foot undisturbed portion of the property um, that flows onto the land trust property. Now that may continue, uh, but the 95 percent of the the flow. Uh, will drain into the uh, the low area, be directed to the focal points, and then discharged into Ocean House Road. Okay. Uh, and then there was also, she had a question about the 15-foot wide strip buffer, I think, between. I just, hmm? You just covered that. That's the. No, on, on this side. John, can you bring up the picture? Is this the side? <laughs> and I'm talking about, I, okay, okay, I was talking about the north side. Yeah, the north side's going to be cleared at our request. Yeah, okay. And graded into the property. The north side will be cleared. That was at our, way to the property. that was at our request. Yes. Okay, good. All right. I think there was another question. There was the first about the easement, some of the yeah, the easement. vegetation in the easement zone, how that would be preserved. Actually, I'm not exactly sure what the question was, but I but think I in that easement zone on the, the, side, the whatever side that is. Yeah, that that is side. a function of the that is a restriction on the property right now. Oh. So we don't have any authority to even change it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's staying as it is now. It's staying exactly the way it is. We just need to make sure that we don't grant an approval that allows them to do something that they're not allowed to do and they're staying out of it. So it would be problematic if they did anything in that zone. I think, I think they want to be assured that there will be no cutting of any trees. Or there won't be any cutting. The, the yeah. easement does allow um, the owner to manage uh, dead wood within that easement. Dead, dead. All right, so I'm going to open up the board to questions. Does anybody want to start? Andrew? Uh, I have a list, but um, the first one that I think I was going to ask initially was, I, and maybe I lost this, you talked about water quantity going into this storm water and how it would kind of be phased, but I sort of lost the quality aspect, how that was going to be treated. Uh, yes, the stormwater quality. Um, what we've done is everything that is in phase one along the road to the ridge line of the building and over in this location all flows across uh, into here. And this swale along here goes to a focal point, which is a water treatment. Uh, system and to this focal point which is another water quality treatment system anything coming off the parking lot flows to a filtration swale here and a filtration swale there 
the water from those uh, infiltrate, go through the uh, biomedia filter, uh, is cleaned up, and it goes into an underdrain system. That underdrain system then connects back to the storm drain system here, across to here, and then over to the uh, uh, storm drain manhole in uh, um, Jordan Way. So even though it goes through the water quality system, uh, it doesn't disappear. We have to collect it and it collects into an underdrain system that eventually outlets over here after it's cleaned. Great. That's, I have a bunch more questions. I don't know if you want me to can you or skip around. Keep going. Um, dumpster screening, that right, right now, I mean, I think I saw there was a comment about, you know, it was going to be chain link changed to wood, but I don't know, kind of might be nice to have some sort of vegetative screening of that. I mean, even the stockade, I mean, we, ha we had it around our dumpster at work and it basically just fell apart and there was nothing else kind of dressing it up. Um, that's, you don't even need to answer that, but. Um, it's, it's wood, we've, we've changed it to. But I mean, is there any, any plan for any plantings, I mean, to kind of screen off and, uh, in addition to kind of, they're just not very attractive, even with the just stockade fencing well, around the dumpster. We have to allow access um, for the truck, mm -hmm. which is right here. I guess eventually um, there'll be a building there, so you won't see it. Is that potentially? There will be a building. There will be. A yeah, building, I was thinking more on the roadside. Located here. Yeah. Um, I think we let me just check. So, um, I mean, we don't have any plantings here, but that, you know, it will be completely encased or surrounded. Mm -hmm. uh, the dumpsters will be surrounded with a, I think it's a six foot high stockade fence with a double gate. Yeah, the only reason why I ask is because it's, you know, that's the, fa that's the one section that faces the road. So, it, I mean, you, I just, it just might not be super attractive, but um, I'll, I'll kind of leave it up to you um, and the owner who's going to have to look at it. Um, my next question was, oh, so in the full build out plan, you had a sidewalk that ran internal all the way down, but right now you can see you've just got that section in front, which, you know, I mean, I guess I get it that um, it makes sense to, to do it, you know, in the phases, but uh, probably just from the perspective of it's going to get kind of destroyed when you try and build that one closer to the street. But from a from a pedestrian access point of view, it seems like for me, I'd want to see the full sidewalk from the from the sidewalk on the street all the way up at least to the to the dental practice. So. If folks are parking in town, they could walk all the way in rather than walking on the road. Um, since you're going to do it anyway, um, I don't know. Uh, maybe it doesn't need to be fully concrete or whatever you're planning initially, um, because it might get kind of beat up in subsequent phases. But for me, it'd be nice to see some connection other than walking on the road to the existing sidewalk along the road. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying, and um, you know, I think you hit on it, that that sidewalk would be completely destroyed in the, the construction of this property here. Um, you know, if the board agrees that perhaps we could do a stone dust pathway that leads out to the Might be at least a good intermediate step. I don't know how, if anyone else cares about this issue or not, but. Yeah, it's a good point. I just feel like it's, you know, try and promote people to walk places, and if, if you have a sidewalk to nowhere, it's not really promoting anything except for walking up from, you know, along the parking lot. Um, so I know it, it's hard, you know, with this phase design, but, you know, it is also in the plans eventually, so. I mean, I would be happy with at least just stone dust, and then at least it's not a huge um, problem if it, you know, it's 
there's no destroying it. It's just stone dust. Uh, but I don't know what others feel about that. I can idea. Or if anyone even else feels like it's necessary. We can, we can pull on it. Why don't you go ahead with your uh, the rest of your yep. questions? Um, lighting at the flagpole area, were you, was there any plan to have lighting or at least conduit that lighting could be put in, not only even at the flagpole, but I don't know if the town... He, he does have a conduit to the flagpole. Um, I don't know what the towns are thought about lighting along that Can you point out where the flagpole is? Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Joe, can I just ask a question on that? Um, and this is to Maureen, based upon that question. My understanding is that Dr. Jacobson is essentially, he's buying this plot of land and then he is donating the village green over to the town, uh, basically giving this as a gift to the town. Um, obviously, they've made a design for that, but once it's, for my, what I remember when we put this village green ordinance in, is that once it's deeded over the town, it's the town's ability, or it's up to the town to maintain it. Is that correct? And that would include any sort of maintenance or any sort of lighting or anything like that? You know, different arrangements have been discussed, but what you're talking about is what I think is the likeliest scenario. That there, the expectation is that the uh, applicant will actually build a green, not just give us the parcel. And so, uh, there are some standards in the town center zoning that talk about it has to have walkways, it has to have a focal point. Um, and the question for the board, and I think that's one of the reasons that the staff recommendation tonight was that one, you're finished with your discussion, that this be tabled to next month rather than you consider a motion for approval, is to just what is the right balance? because um, the applicant is taking on a lot, of the, um, the, a lot of the base structure. He's putting the bones in, he's clearing it, he's, he's adding fill, he's leveling it out, he is putting in some walkways, he is creating a focal point. Is he doing enough? Um, it's I, my great expectation that uh, this site will grow in affection by the town over the years and will be improved. And things like what you're talking about could actually happen. Um, that's what the board may want to talk about, is, is how, how much of a burden this applicant should carry and how much do you want to structure into um, a clear direction for the full build out so that um, if there are some expectations, for example, I've suggested that, you know, I think there should be a sidewalk along the entire length of this road, and, and maybe there should be one on both sides of the road. And um, if there's a clear expectation that that should be happening, perhaps there should be some notes on this plan so that the future pad buyers know what they're getting into and you don't have to re-argue or redesign this at every step. So um, I think that would be a beneficial discussion by the board with the applicant tonight to kind of narrow in um, generally where you are because staff has made some recommendations, but uh, most of this stuff has happened since the last submission. So it really, really would behoove the planning board to talk about how far do they have to go with this, understanding that they're, they're already doing a heavy lift by putting in the initial grading. I, mean, I think I would add that I, I don't, I, I agree with that. I think a, ba a balance makes sense. But um, in terms of like lighting it, I, I know things like putting in conduit is far easier initially. And, and, and maybe it's just thinking about things like setting up the structure that one could have lights by just tying into the conduit now and letting the town decide what they want for lighting in the future. But at least having that in the plan and, and, and executing it when this is put in so that it's not destroying, you know, it just makes everything a lot easier in the future and gives them future capacity. That, that would be my comment, but, but we can talk about that. Um, and I, I don't know what your plan, Maureen, was for actually discussing more of these kinds of issues. I've got some thought when you're done. I've got some okay. great. I think we'll let everyone throw everything out and then come circle back. Right. Yep. Okay, Jim. No, I have you two more. Two oh, or three I'm sorry. More. That's Go ahead. okay. Um, L11. That must be Plan 11. I just, um, I just have a note that text is cut off. 
um, I think it was like a text box that got cut off by another text box, so it, there's not like full text on it. Um, I don't know if that was cleaned up on one of these sheets. I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, this one just a little sheet. Where the precast concrete catch basin is. Oh, uh, yeah. It's Your window for the text didn't cover all the text, is what it is. On, on detail 3L9, the precast L9. concrete catch basin. Detail 3. On the left side, kind of halfway up. Catch re cast reinforce and creep. You can see it's just the window on CAD wasn't quite big enough. Yeah, we'll we'll correct it. Yeah. I just noticed that. That's a standard detail. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um D two. Uh, D two. D two. Uh, I have a comment the you have uh, post-development plan village green shown as impervious. There's like some section, I think it's this, um, you have them like color coded and you have actually the semicircle as impervious, but you actually, I think have it listed as semi-pervious pavers or something. So, I mean, I think technically it's not impervious, right? Is that true? Maybe that, maybe it's changed. I'm not sure. Technically, that's correct. I mean, the uh, the area up above I uh, looked at as being uh, impervious, though it is a uh, porous pavers with an underdrain system in there. So, uh, yes, it's pervious. Um, at least for the one-inch storm, yeah. it's pervious. Beyond that, it is not. That's all I have. Thanks. Okay, Jim, yeah. would you like to? Yeah, I just being selfish from the parade point of view, um, on L5, and it gets into the, um, like you said, how much work do you do? How much work does the town do? You've got the conduit running to the flagpole. Are you pulling wire and providing a, a, a receptacle or just putting in conduit? No, I've, I've anticipated putting a receptacle. Okay. Yeah. I just, it's one of those things, it doesn't say, you know, you don't have a full electrical plan, I understand. Right. right. I just wanted to just be clear who's, who's, who's doing that, if the town has to do it. And then, again, from the parade point of view, I anticipate that the existing memorial that's in front of the elementary school right now, which is like a big gravestone, will be relocated over there. So where to put it? And my first thought was, and we don't have to make a decision now, but I want to give people time to think about it, that middle bench, um, either right now pour a pad, and it's approximately a uh, three feet by eight feet pad, something like that, to put the memorial on, just to have it there, because it's gonna be simpler to do it now than to have to go back after you've done everything and tear it up to put it in. And you can actually set that bench on top of the pad for now, or just not have that middle bench, because it's, it's a good place to put the, the memorial instead of sticking it off to the side somewhere. Um, Can I ask so, a question? Yeah. Regarding that, who makes the decision on whether that memorial gets moved or not? Well, it'll essentially be me because I think Matt Sturgis is going to say, what do you want to do, Jim? <laughs> so, I believe Lenny Board Member Huebner yeah. has characterized that exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I didn't know if it was more I will have a say in it. So, so we're not saying that you would be making that decision and showing the memorial on the plan, but yeah. maybe you would have a pad there that would be the right size and not put a bench there. Does that yeah. sound about right? Right. Right. The memorial won't be much bigger than the bench, really. It's just the pad will be a little bit long, you know, wider. And, right. And, um, and I guess I want to echo Andrew's comments about lighting because right now there isn't any and we need to decide who's going to put it in because 
people will want to be there at night, and if it's completely dark, you know, not that Cape Elizabeth is a high crime area, but um, people would feel more comfortable if there's some sem sense of lighting at night. You know, Can you be, are you saying along the path or along the perimeter? Um, probably more where the flagpole area is, is my okay. sense. Plus also, you, I'm not completely familiar with, the, with flag regulations, but if you have a light shining on it, you never have to go raise a flag up and down every day. Which if you don't have lighting there, then somebody from the town's gotta do that. One more chore, I guess, as it is. So, again, I want to get that out there. We don't have to decide right now. Anything else? That's it. Do you have anything? I just, I just want to say that um, I think I think the applicant is putting forward a whole lot on this village green, and I think the town needs to start thinking about yeah. where it's going to take over, because. Um, Putting this in what the infrastructure they're talking about now—that's that's a lot of work and that's yeah. a lot of a lot it of is. dollars, and I don't think the town should expect a whole lot more without figuring out how they're going to pony up. I would concur with Carolyn. Okay, Jonathan. Um, the only questions I had are well, the question: the area for the quality control of the water. Um, and I assume in there's the, the two dark uh, rectangle and square on the plan. Can you just briefly describe what that's going to look like, or is it something that's even going to be visible? Okay, what, what those are is uh, there's uh, the stormwater sheets across the pavement and into interceptor sort of swales, very shallow swales, they're all mowable. Uh, and it goes into uh, it's a product name called a focal point. Uh, first goes into a rain garden turret um, uh, guiding and what it does is it just collects the water and then it distributes it out into uh, a stilling basin like a stone basin but then into a rain garden it so it's it's very similar to a rain garden uh, but then below that it has a, uh, a biomedia filter um, to clean that water up and then uh, allow it to go into uh, an underdrain system. The, uh, the product focal point uh, is very uh, conducive to large areas. One acre of impervious area can be cleaned uh, up uh, in 174 square feet of this uh, material. Um, and so that's very very efficient in doing that, and it's an accepted uh, uh, water quality measurement by DEP. Okay. Well, so it looks like a rain garden looks with like a, a, rain garden. a basin at an end um, of that. Okay. Did you describe? Uh, did you provide any sketches or anything in the plan? I side? believe in uh, the details. There's a, uh, a focal point detail. Is it L Is that it? It's on L12. L12. All right, I'll take a look at that, but um, in the meantime, uh, one of the things that I just wanted to say is uh, and I, I commend Dr. Jacobson and the, and the application process for taking this on because I know it's not it's a lot of heavy lifting on his part, which will essentially be a donation to the town, so um, I appreciate that, and uh, I think that this Village Green would really be a treasure for the town to, to have. It's something that we discussed uh, for the time that I've been on the board. Um, so I really, uh, I think, uh, under the right circumstances, um, it would be nice to see this happen. Obviously, we want to do it correctly, though. Um, and the only thing I wanted to say is that I know that last time um, during the site walk, uh, when we discussed the elevation-wise, uh, I can understand why, uh, yeah, in a, in a perfect world, it uh, would be level all the way across. Uh, to the other side, but um, that's a lot of dollars for somebody to have to take on uh, to get, I think, what was about five or six feet of yeah. uh, fill. And I can understand why um, that the applicant might not be in a financial situation to do that. Um, but I, I like the idea of the, the terrace and the one foot increase. I think that's uh, really showing a lot and going forward on that. So um, I don't think that that would be 
anything that would stop me from um, supporting this, but I just, uh, and I can understand why, uh, like I said, it's not to the standard of um, the five feet of fill. Dan? Yeah, sure. Um, just a, question, a couple questions uh, about the, uh, the trees on L3, the height of the, the, the trees. Um, let's see, the ones along the street, I guess. I can't hear you, Dan. Oh, I'm sorry. The trees along the street, just the height. Do you have a sense of that? Oh, those are uh, three feet. Okay. Okay. Also, um, following up on Jonathan's discussion about, and thank you so much for the discussion about the focal point. So in a, in a major storm, do you foresee standing water in the, in the oh, rain garden, or what's your sense of that? The, uh, the focal point areas are a depressed uh, area, but yeah. it, it's only depressed um, by uh, six inches. It has to be planted with water-tolerant plants, vegetation. Okay. So what it does is it collects their size, so it collects the first inch of rainfall off of the site, off the impervious area, into that, allows the pond six inches, and then it starts to go down through the bio uh, filtration media. Um, anything in excess of a one inch storm overflows and will go into a catch basin that uh, was actually, it's probably that black dot there, I believe, is a catch basin that uh, collects the stormwater that overflows from that or from that uh, lower terraced area. Uh, the water has to get out and, and over to Jordan Way somehow. And so both that focal point and this focal point connect over to this um, storm drain manhole and uh, allows their under drain to connect there and also anything that overflows will go to that catch basin and go across the street. Uh, great, thank you. Okay, uh, anybody else? Hi. Uh, go ahead. I just had a follow up actually question to about the focal point filters. Okay. Uh, Mine's different, so go ahead. Do they have to be square and or rectangular? The only reason why I ask is because, I don't know, it's kind of, it seemed like if it was maybe something not square or rectangular it might look more natural, I guess. Um, uh, those are um, pure engineering designs. Yeah. I, I deal with straight lines. John doesn't. Um, <laughs> So no, they are, you are correct. They are, they're form fitting. They can, as a garden is, you can create them any shape. They just have to take on a designed footprint area. Size. So if this one is 100 square feet and that's 74 square feet, yes, they are, they can be shaped so they don't look like that. You're correct. Okay, I just, yeah, it would look more attractive, I think, if it had more yes. look. Yeah, they, so. okay, thanks. they won't that's great. look like that. Yeah. Okay, Carol Ann. This has to do with the phasing and the stormwater management that you're working with DEP and the town's system. And I realize that the full study of the town system isn't going to happen until, be done until September. But what is the impact if, if, you, if it's found that a fully phased project with all four buildings cannot be handled by the town's uh, stormwater system? Uh, we haven't even thought of that. Um, <laughs> what, we're, what we're anticipating, and uh, we feel comfortable uh, about that, is that when the study was done in 1995, and then the storm drain system that was upgraded uh, a decade ago, I'm not quite sure of the date, uh, on Route 77, uh, those pipes were installed for future build-out, and I cannot imagine that they were put in without a, a good feeling that downstream uh, it was acceptable uh, and would accept that additional flow. Because those storm drains that are installed out here and in Jordan Way are designed for full build-out, anticipated build-out of the town center. Um, and in doing so, I would imagine that it was evaluated all the way to the marsh 
and that it was acceptable, uh, but it's just a matter of uh, Sebago Technics taking the flows and running it. Uh, if there is anything, um, we've already discussed that with Bob Malley, it may be a pipe size that has to be increased. You can't really increase slopes because they're stuck, uh, but pipe sizes uh, may uh, increase in, in a location, but we really don't know that. Right now, the flows that are coming off site, a 25-year storm, 6.3 inches in 24 hours is significant, and we have approximately five CFS additional coming off site. The 24-inch pipe has approximately 12 CFS in it on a normal storm, a 25-year storm. We feel there's a capacity uh, there, but that won't be determined until that evaluation is done. So what's... So would you What's the would you go ahead and build it this way? Yes. And then if you had to change it? But you, no. What we would be changing is nothing on site or nothing coming off the site into the storm drain system. It's a matter of the town storm drain system. Good morning. This is what we need a little more time on. So, <laughs> um, so all the applicant is seeking now is, is approval for phase one. And there's nothing that they're doing for phase one that shuts them off from options for full build out. Okay. So, I mean, while staff has been extremely um, discouraging of on site detention, the area that they could use for on site detention is going to stay in ownership of the, for the property owner for now. And we're hoping to have the answer on capacity by mid September. I, I have a high doubts that any other building will be get will get approved here before mid September. So I think we've got time. And then you know we are we are still very committed to the town center stormwater plans which say that you put your stormwater into the town stormwater system. And you know there might be a pipe from where this project connects to the outlet that is a little undersized. And the, the town has not closed the door to making infrastructure improvements itself to its stormwater system. The entire um, point from where this development connects in to the outlet is all on town property. So we have, we have total control over it. And that's a good situation to be in. So we can make adjustments to that system. We just don't know with, with a significant amount of confidence. So that's where we are right now, um, pushing the applicant to uh, connect to the town system as their design. My understand is the, the applicant is very desirous of um, having the building constructed by December. So that's the other thing we're trying to, to plan is to make sure this uh, question that we're trying to answer does not uh, significantly alter the applicant's construction schedule. So as designed, located, put into the stormwater for phase one. That's been approved by the town. The town has said that it will accept the stormwater from this project. And we're, we're saying that without having 100% confidence that the system we have now is large enough. But we have high level of confidence that if we find a problem, we can, we can take care of it. How's that? Fair and the, the bigger question is build out. It's phase one, it, the capacity is there, there's no question. We're, we're, the all, we're like 99 percent sure. And, you know, I don't want to freak out the town engineer and the public works director so. too much, but we're, we're fairly sure we're okay with phase one and phase, and the full build out will not be happening before September 15. So okay. is there protection for the applicant in some way that the town basically will sign off and say, even though we're only not, you know, there's a 1% chance that it might not be okay, but the town's going to deal with it? Is that? Yes, and that's why we need this little extra time that, you know, the submission deadline is um, a week from this Friday. So we have almost two weeks to sort out these last details before the applicant has to submit their final application. And, you know, we're expecting that application to include commitments from the town. All right, anything else? Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, I'm sorry, did you want to? So when uh, would the Village Green be conveyed to the town? Would that be as part of phase one? 
Do we know that? What, and th again, I would say this is some of those details that we, okay. we need to, I would think that we would want, the, I mean, if it was up to me, I think the Village Green should be constructed and then conveyed to the town pretty close to when the certificate of occupancy is issued for the building. Okay. And I think these are, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, hesitating a little because trying to get into a building and by the end of December you run into weather and um, I think there are ways for us to work out those details, but I think they do need to be worked out. Okay. Um, so I have a comment in that I'm pretty satisfied with the level of the infrastructure you're providing on the Village Green, uh, the path. It seems like there's a lot of planting. Um, can you go back to the full build-out slide here? So these the trees around the top and the side, those are intentional? Those aren't just... These trees? All the trees and around the, the, uh, the parking area. Yes, those are intentional. Okay, so... Um, I mean, one thing I would like to see, I would love to see a stone dust path, both uh, as we discussed earlier and also around the interior of the parking area. Um, but I'm not sure that that's something I would expect you to provide or the town. What we have discussed is once these two buildings are constructed to provide pedestrian circulation from roughly this area, to the village green. Straight in. Yeah. All right, then my other comment is I think your flagpole's in the wrong place. <laughs> and when, when I look at this, I, where you have the gym, where you have the flagpole is right where I see Jim doing his uh, Flanders Field poem and in back of him are his singers Good and point. other people. And so I think the flagpole should actually be the backdrop to that. Or right. in the with back it, of that, or maybe in the front, with one the or the benches other. So the, so so the pad you, is where the flagpole is, and the flagpole is where the middle bench is. Yeah, the flagpole could be in back of the middle bench. Yep. Right yep. Or, right. or it could be brought all the way forward yeah. to the I'll, front. I'll take a look at that. John, right in back of the monument. Right. Good point there, Joe. All right. Any other questions? John? Um, for, I know this is getting beyond phase one, but was there any thought that during phase one you would build at least some parking outside of the building uh, for phase one so that people could use it to access the village green? I know, as was pointed out with Andrew's comment, that um, a lot of parking would probably be destroyed uh, or at least the um, pathway would be damaged w with building, but I'm just seeing the, the I think it's uh, eight spots on the village green side uh, when you enter, uh, whether or not that was ever thought of, of putting that in during phase one, so there could be parking for the village green besides using town hall. Just a thought. Okay. Anything else? I'm trying to decide whether I agree with that or not, but there, there were a couple of items I brought up. Is it all right if I just kind of roll through this real yes. quick? Okay. Um, can I interject real quick? Does anybody else want to comment on the uh, Maureen's question about the level of infrastructure being provided? I mean, there was talk about adding lighting, you know, and other you mean things. To how much is the green. town going to do? Or? Yeah, well, how much can we expect the applicant to provide? And I mean, I kind of feel like the grading and the path and the what's shown so far is probably as much as really can be expected. I don't know if. You guys I'm think? sure there are those in the town who want them to do everything, but okay. that's not practical. Yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, I guess, fair, but what is fair? But I, I guess I can see what you're, 
what you're saying. I could, I could live with that. I agree with you, John. <laughs> no, I, 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 like I said, I think the applicant has done quite yeah. a service if this goes through, so. All right. Okay, so, um, and I think some of these you've already answered, so I just wanna double check. Um, so I'm hearing that the board is interested in seeing more sidewalks uh, perhaps being better delineated as part of future phases. Using stone dust, is that what you're... No, I'm, I'm saying making more of a commitment about what the additional sidewalks would be when the additional buildings come in. Yeah. Okay. Not not committing this, this particular applicant. All right. I mean, um, to be clear, I would love to see at least stone dust, at least for that section connecting the first building in the street, but that would be my personal preference. In addition to what you said, that yes, more it laid out for the future phases. But Andrew, ahead. can you talk into the microphone? Oh, sorry. I just um, to be clear, for me, I I would like to see at least stone dust connecting to the pathway that's on. I mean, this is deceiving, but the one in front of the building that's going to be built out. But I also agree with the general comment to have more sort of pathways laid out on the plan for the total build out. Right. Um, on the southern border, John, um, there's a narrow 15 foot strip and you're proposing to keep existing vegetation. It would be nice to know if there is any in that 15 foot strip area. If there are. If there is any vegetation that is a vi that will be there when you're done with the clearing. Yeah. And if there isn't, then we might need some buffering. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Um, and then there is uh, the lighting plan. Um, we always have this kind of issue where you're not supposed to exceed 0.5 foot candles at the property line. And at the front property line, there are many locations where the 0.5 foot candles are exceeded, but that's because the applicant is installing the pedestrian town center light fixtures. So um, it's not real, it's on, it's on the town right of way, not on the applicant's property, and the 0.5 doesn't really apply in that instance. But there is some, some light that's going on near your driveway that is on your property, and you can tell by the foot candle radii that... We've, we've adjusted that fixture. You've adjusted it, yep. okay, thank you. Um, and then you said you had a generator, or there should, there should be something submitted that talks about the decibel level at the property line. And you might be able to uh, pull something off the internet that estimates you know, how quiet a dentist office is. What we said in our, um, the submission that we're gonna be making is that once mechanical equipment it has been determined that we will provide that information. Is the board satisfied with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hold on. I mean, so, just, so when is that going to be determined? Sorry, uh, I'm just sort of thinking. So when, so that's prior to, not prior to us signing off on it though, right? No, you would, I mean, what you would probably have to do is put a condition on the approval that the mechanical equipment will not exceed 0.5 foot candles at the property line and the applicant would have to submit information after the mechanical equipment is installed and if it's more than 0.5 foot candles, they're in violation of their approval. You mean, it's, it's you mean decibels? Way. Yeah. Decibels. Decibels, yeah. It's a kind of a backwards way to get into it. That, that's fine. I just know we actually took over a dentist's office, and I know there's like some pretty hefty vacuum equipment that that I mean it's pretty buried in the building. And I don't think you would have heard it, but it just I want to just make sure yeah that's clear that that is the, in the. I guess I, based on experience, I don't have a high level of confidence that the generator will be quiet enough at the property line. But that's just based on running a bunch of generators. Just trying to make sure there's an adequate information in the in the record for you to make that finding. This is an emergency generator, right? right. Just like everybody's emergency generator, yeah. correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. But there presumably will be vacuum pumps too yeah. for the for the dental office. Yes. Yeah, but that's inside. Inside. 
They're, they're down in they're down in the basement, right? The vacuum pumps. Yeah. So you won't hear those. So um, then we get to the town center design standards, and the standards do say that the first floor front facade has to have an equal proportion of openings to solid wall space, and that first floor front facade does not. And you know it's it's a standard. What was the percentage? I don't remember. I wasn't sure because I believe the applicant was using the, were using the side as well as the front. Yeah. So both it's, the it, the way it is currently, both the front and the side each have forty five percent. Are you talking about the first floor or the entire? First floor only. The first floor only. Yeah. Can you bring back the slide? It's just I don't I don't know if the board has any ability to waive that. So what are you counting? So we're talking uh, these. How windows. are you counting? Are counting to the outside of trim? Yeah. So we're counting if we to get a little technical here. So we're so at this elevation here. We're talking. We're talking from this gray line up to this 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 soffit line here. So, this is all lobby here, and and again, that's it, it does say that the first floor. So, you know, these are here, but they're not technically counted because they're. I mean, they're. Why not? We can, well, we can get really technical, but it's. You they're know, not. The, are they letting light into the space, or are they? They, fake? they are. This is a vaulted lobby area. So you should area. count them. Yeah. So, so we can count that if the board's in agreement. It's above yeah. the second, you know, it's above the limit of the second floor. Um, mm -hmm. There's these windows here that are not included, but do provide light into the lobby as well. Um, this is part of the entrance, um, and then we kind of get into you know real office space. There's a, a restroom here. There's a restroom here. There's some offices here, um, and then when we get to the the side here. So this is. All so wait, are you doing waiting. the side because it's facing? Because as you approach, road? yeah, from the, from the approach road, you actually you see okay. a lot of this elevation here. It's so it's I know I know it's not really a hundred percent part of the um, part of the ordinance and how it's designed. So Matt, we don't need to count that. So let's go back okay. to the front. We're just that one. You know the. Architecture has four sides. We're just we're looking at this as a as a big picture. You know, like if you seize market here, if you just go down the street. So wait, light. are you are you counting as window the out to out of the casings? I mean, going from forty five to fifty percent is not a lot to pick up. It's not a lot. No. So we're counting the frame of the window. We're not counting, we're not counting casing or so count the casings. or anything like that. <laughs> it's not glazing. It's casing. <laughs> Yeah, I, the I just I, the only reason I say it visually that looks like plenty of windows to me. I, I wouldn't I, like. I agree. I, I just I don't see how you calculate it and start making every window a little wider for what purpose? I don't. I mean, to meet the standard of the ordinance. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe I'm in the minority on that. I I can hear what you just said. I said, I, I didn't, Maureen makes a good point that that's the standard. So. Yeah. Because it's in the ordinance, we can't waive it. It says the first floor front facade shall be, con shall be constructed with an equal proportion of openings to wall space. And you can't, you can't have more, you, you, if you wanted more glass, it says you can't have more glass? You can have more. Yeah, he has 5% less. less. Yeah. So. I'd say go recalculate it with those three windows yeah. up above. Or I'd say add a couple more windows. Because <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we can't get, if the standard is 50%, it's got to be 50%. So. Uh, to play, I'm not double F. I'm, oh, how do you, I mean, does it say in the standard exactly how one's supposed to calculate this? The no. first floor front facade shall be constructed with an equal proportion of openings to wall space. So, 
something. My trouble with this is, and, and I actually agree, it seems like plenty. So from a design perspective, I don't have a problem with this. I, I get where Maureen's coming from. Uh, we have to treat everybody equally and, and apply the, the ordinance as it is. How, how can, you ca can you include the, th see, you didn't include the three upper windows, and I, I get that because you're saying then you're not then also calculating probably the area of the peak of that of that lofted space that's lofted then correct right so how could you add those three windows and then not also include the area above that in that lofted space as being first floor so i i don't to, to me somebody could come back and say well that's kind of bs to, to include three windows and not include the area above it as first floor so that's why i'm questioning how is it calculated because well, that know, does matter the the hillway project was much much larger than this and they calculated it and gave us the number and proved that they had met the standard. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then also, uh, does the board want to get a sample of exterior materials? Yeah, aren't we supposed you bet. to? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. We can discuss color, can't we? A little bit. Tonight? <laughs> no, let's not discuss it tonight. <laughs> Okay, so Matt, you'll bring samples of both colors. All right. Anybody else have anything? So, uh, Jim. Got a motion for the board to consider. Awesome. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of David S. Jacobson for site plan review and a resource protection permit for Ocean House Commons, a 7144 square foot mixed use office slash two apartment unit building and Village Green located at 326 Ocean House Road and a resource protection permit to fill 3,500 square feet of RP2 wetland be tabled to the regular May 21st, 2019 meeting of the planning board. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. All right. Everybody ready? Yeah. Dan, John, Jim, you ready? Okay. You good, Kevin? I'm just trying to find it on the. Oh, is it no name? And that's that no name? Yeah, maybe that's it. Yep. Introduce it then. All right. Okay, 1226 Shore Road Mixed Office slash Restaurant slash Eight Apartments Development. Patrick Tinsman is requesting approval of a mixed office slash restaurant slash Eight Apartments Development located at 1226 Shore Road. The Planning Board granted site plan approval with conditions on October 20th, 2017. Necessary plan revisions to comply with the conditions resulted in a need for amendments to the site plan approval. The approval expired before the applicant returned for amendments, so reapproval of the development is proposed, subject to compliance with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations and Section 19-64-D3 Town Center Design Requirements. And before I invite you guys up to speak, um, Maureen is going to make a brief statement about the packet that was uh, 
waiting for us when we got here this evening. Right, so I've delivered a couple of things to you and one of them is a letter from the town attorney that is addressing, can you reach back into expired plans and, and reference material or is that a problem for uh, planning board members who weren't there at the time? So he has provided you that advice. Um, I think this applicant has tried very hard to bring you a complete application. Uh, there was a submission made and you received that and I put together the, the list of things that were originally approved and the list that were submitted in 2019. And then last Thursday, the applicant provided another package of information, which I realize you haven't had a chance to look at. It was on your table tonight. But um, I also did give you one of these sheets right here and this shows you that um, Pretty much everything that was missing, um, as in the memo that I gave you, has now been provided in the package in front of you. The only item that I identified as missing was something that's called generator specifications, uh, and I think Catherine's going to address that. That actually wasn't generators, it was heat pumps, and um, I believe that they're ready to provide that information to you as well. So what you might be asked to do tonight is um, to accept the information that you've just received even though you haven't seen it. Um, and based on that, deem it complete and then table it to next month. And that would give you time to review everything. It gives staff time to look at everything. And then this applicant could still be on track for getting a reapproval after a public hearing next month. Does ever, anybody have any serious issue with that? Okay. So um, you can come on up, introduce yourself, and... I am Catherine Detmer from Archetype Architects, and I'm here with Steve Bushy with Goral Palmer. And would you rather I go through this, or should I go ahead and hand over? It is the heat pump specification that lists the decibel level to show it in compliance with the standards. You can hand it to us after. Uh, after? Yeah, it's okay. fine. Um, I'm going to pass this off to Steve to begin with, but I am just going to point out we're talking about 1226 Shore Road. Most of you have seen this presentation a few times, but I know we have new members. Um, most of the work is being done on Building A up here along 1226. Here's the town hall right here where we are tonight. And then there is also a second uh, building on the property. We're calling that Building B, and that's in discussion because of some uh, issues from a previous owner, so we will look at that. But Steve's going to talk you through the site plan first. Evening, Steve Bushy with Goral Palmer. Last time I was before the board, I was with Stantec, and you see on the drawings, uh, Stantec logo. I've since changed jobs, but the job has followed me, and so I'll still remain the engineer of record uh, on the drawings. The site plan that we had uh, presented previously uh, included the initial, or the, the larger building here that will be renovated, and Catherine will speak more to what the renovations are involved. With, uh, the change of uses and so forth uh, along Shore Road. Principally, the, the large pieces of site work include the parking lot here and a garage area here. Today there's an existing smaller parking lot just off of the building in the back. Again, here is the town's uh, uh, recycling area over to this side. So there's a right-of-way or an easement area here that benefits the uh, town that allows access through the property over to uh, the recycling area and, and the town property that will continue in use and that will provide access to this parking lot here. We're going to have a total of 34 parking spaces and previously we had outlined the idea of uh, under code, I believe the requirement for the land uses that are being proposed was uh, at least for the front building here, a total of 36 spaces and we were granted uh, approval for 34 uh, spaces with some shared uh, use given what the uses will be, including some residential and then office and potential retail, recognizing that in the evening hours the retail won't likely need those spaces, so uh, we have ample uh, enough parking here given the surface parking and then the garage area along here. Overall, that we do have a, a small amount of increase in impervious area, and that's resulting from not only uh, this parking lot, but the building pieces. We're going to be removing a piece of building here, and again, Catherine will go through this a little bit more closely, adding a piece of building here and then out in the frontage here. 
principal piece on stormwater management will be the fact that we're proposing this as a porous asphalt parking lot. Uh, it's not real common here in, in this region, but uh, becoming a little bit more uh, uh, used among projects. Uh, I've done it now a couple of times on some larger scale parking lots. Uh, this isn't all that large, but it was, uh, from my perspective, from the design side of things, in a pretty appropriate space in that area to be able to use this porous asphalt. Basically, the rain will hit the porous asphalt surface and be able to percolate down through it. It's a special asphalt mix, not like the traditional asphalt that you see more often than not being placed in our, in our streets and sidewalks. This is, has a porous component. Water will simply go right down through it. And then we have a fairly thick section of gravels and filtering layer and an undergrain layer beneath that. Uh, to capture and filter the water and provide the treatment. So it is a, an, an approved BMP. Uh, historically, it hasn't been all that common because it hasn't been uh, a supplier of the asphalt mix, but Shaw Brothers over in Gorm has uh, a new batch plant and they are uh, now becoming more and more commonly a provider of, of porous mix. Uh, my largest project to date uh, that use that approach was the uh, Department of Human Services building over by the Portland Jet Port. That was a pretty sizable parking lot. I think we had over 300 vehicles in that lot and uh, about 75% of that lot is poor. So you go out there at any point in time in the rainfall event and unlike a regular parking lot where you see a lot of water sheeting off and going to catch basins, basically the water just sheets down and, and goes in through uh, the asphalt. So it's a, a nice mix. And what will happen, we'll capture the water here, we do have an underdrain system and that will ultimately uh, make its way out through uh, some piping and then discharge at the low end of the site out behind uh, building B. Site plan elements include also a sidewalk connection uh, along this access route, a couple of ADA parking spaces here, and uh, to the point that uh, Kate, Catherine just mentioned about the heat pumps, we have heat pumps located here next to uh, an access walkway uh, to the uh, basement space of the building. Uh, site plan elements that were also discussed and approved uh, originally included some additional plantings here. We have a 50 foot wide uh, retained buffer along this east side of the property and to supplement the fact that we have this garage space, uh, the approval originally accounted for an additional six tree plantings here, evergreen tree type plantings, and we have other landscape elements and measures here that are shown throughout the, the site plan up along and in, in front of the building here and in between the parking lot and then up against this uh, building uh, B area. I'll note parking wise, building B has a, a two space garage as well as three exterior spaces to meet the uh, supply requirements of the code for that building space of, of the additional five parking spaces. Building out front is the primary development uh, piece, benefits as an existing building with existing utilities, uh, water, sewer, sewer exits the building today with a, a lift station located up in front of the building and that pumps uh, the wastewater up along uh, Shore Road to 77. Water's uh, gonna be improved here with a new uh, water line for domestic and fire supply uh, systems into the building. Power will remain unchanged and exit or enter this side of the building uh, uh, right in this location. That was the site plan. Here is the grading and drainage plan. And again, talking about the porous pavement surface and the under, series of underdrain pipes. We also have uh, a few structures to capture water. Uh, that would be in a little landscaped area here, another little low landscaped area here that will discharge through a small series of pipes, ultimately to a small swale. And this is the low part of the site today. Uh, generally speaking, grading from the back half of the existing building over to this area, that will be the principal area being reworked and we, we noted that and talked about that a little bit when there was a site walk previously. Uh, and again, coming back to the fact that the garage space is in here and what was gonna be happening right up against that 50 foot uh, buffer area. Uh, the decision of uh, putting in some supplemental tree plantings here was one that uh, the board at the time felt was uh, a necessary condition, so that was shown on that, that previous plan I just showed you. 
So those are the, the basics here into the site plan piece and uh, grading and drainage and utilities. Felt that uh, we did go through uh, a few back and forths back in that original time frame with uh, the town's peer review consultant. I think we uh, addressed and tightened up uh, a lot of uh, uh, minor comments and got the, the plan set to a point where we were uh, pretty well ready in for construction and unfortunately it's, we've just had a little bit of a gap in time here. So I'll let Catherine take the rest of the pre presentation from there. And I do want to make one adjustment to what Steve said. There were some recalculations done on the square footage of building B and when they were done it turned out that building B actually needs six spaces. Your table does match this. We're asking for one shared space for building B. Um, so the table says five spaces are um, existing, one shared. So I'm going to talk through building A to start because that's really where our work is taking place. This is the existing basement plan, um, which I'm bringing up the demo plan because of there it was a question about what was going on in that space. There is an existing kitchen down in there and that is going to be demoed as shown here, the partitions. And then there is also a porch out back that's going to come off. Um, and then when we look at the new uh, basement plan, you can see the entire area is used for storage for the uses above. Everything is denoted as storage or utility space. And then the two red boxes are, are outlining where the additions will go within the basement. But just to clarify, the kitchen will be removed, all storage within the basement. When we get to the first floor, so currently the building is one floor with a basement. We are going to demo that entire first floor. Most uh, We're going to demo a lot of the foundation because it's not in good shape and re-pour it. And we're going to go up to three stories. The first story is here. We're going to have two office spaces and then a retail slash restaurant up front. So we have a large office space here. We have a smaller office out back towards the parking lot, and then we have a retailer restaurant. We're listing it as restaurant because that's a more restrictive use, so we want to go in with that because it's easier to go from a restaurant to retail than from retail to restaurant. Then we have a corridor that runs all the way through the building so that you can come in off of Shore Road, access any of the uses, and go out to the parking. Um, everybody has... Uh, or I'm sorry, not everyone. The larger office space has an exterior door and an interior, as does the retail. They have an exterior off of the access road and an interior off of the corridor. And then there's a um, main door out back off that corridor that will get you into the small office. And we have two stairwells down from the floors above, one of which has an elevator, so you have two means of egress. When we go upstairs, both of the upper floors each have four units. These are two bedroom apartments ranging around 1,200 square feet, each with an exterior deck, and you can see that main corridor running down with the two egress stairs and the elevator. When we get to the elevations, um, you can see we've differentiated that first floor from the upper floors. They're differentiated inside by use, but we also are using the color. We have certain teed shingles on here, and we're using a charcoal gray at the base going up to a cedar look above. And on top of that, the windows, um, although they line up for balance within the building, the first floor is going to be casement windows with no divisions, and the upper floor will have uh, divided light double hung windows. In designing this roof line and how the upper portion works, because we're going into that residential use and we're trying to tie into the neighborhood along Shore Road, it has more of a cottage look. So we're using the dormer effect. And even though we have walls that continue all the way up to get our space inside, we're um, adding an eave around to um, match up those lines and create that cottage look. The, bay, uh, the garage out back, the eight bays, we're going with more of the carriage house look. Um, we're sloping that roof and adding a decorative door along, along with some lighting that we'll cast down. We'll see in some renderings. So if we look at the renderings of this building, this is coming along Shore Road from the resident, residential end heading towards 77. So we have that office space coming forward here. And then as you get over towards the retail portion, you can see there's even more glazing because that would be the livelier of the two corners. But it's nicer to have the quiet office with the larger wing protruding forward up against the residential neighbor. And then we continued around around here. You can see that central door with a path off of Shore Road inviting um, pedestrian access or bicycle access for anybody using that office space or restaurant. Just an evening shot showing that lighting. We'll have some lighting up on the decks cascading down and some under the uh, entryways. 
And then I did just drop the building into actual site photos so that you could see how the surrounding foliage would look and the lines are out front, just being more realistic about it. Then if we head towards uh, town more, there is that corner coming forward with the retail restaurant. It has its entry over here on the access road. These spaces out front, although they're not allowed by zoning, if they're new, there are already existing spaces, so we're using those to get some nice ADA space with good access to the doors. And again, dropping that rendering into an actual photo so that you can see the existing trees out front are remaining. Now we're rounding around the back. Here's the parking area with plantings, but we have a door into that larger office space. And then we have a door here that accesses the main hallway so that you can get to any of the businesses or get to the vestibule to go upstairs. Zooming back more, you can see the um, garage that is clad in the same material, tying it into the residential portion as each of the units would have one interior garage space and then just an evening shot from out back. And now building B. Um, we were not doing any work on building B and that's where some of this got confusing in the first round. We were given drawings and when we scaled the building off of those drawings, we had a certain square footage. It turned out that the building was built differently than it was in the drawings that we had originally, but we were able to get our hands on the true drawings of building B and using the way that Cape Elizabeth requires us to calculate the square footage, we recalculated that and the building was larger than it was first submitted to be. So these are drawings showing both levels with the uses proposed and the square footage that exists today. On the first floor of that building, there is a kitchen. Um, the kitchen, existing kitchen, is shown up here. It has a range, it has a dishwasher, a full-size fridge. It was deemed by um, the town that this is out of scale for an office use, especially a small office such as this, because it is common to have kitchens in offices. But we are happy to scale that back. This is showing what is to be done with that kitchen, removing the full-size fridge, removing the range and the dishwasher, and then in place of that range, we're gonna put an under-counter fridge. This was run by Ben McDougall, your code officer, and I, in your packet there's a letter included that states that he's fine with this plan. I'm not gonna talk about this I, unless you want me to, I can come back to it, but our original submission did go through all of the lighting styles proposed for the building, including the parking that are matching downtown lights, signage lighting. We did have a lighting plan showing it being in um, compliance with requirements. We located and sized all of our signs along the building. And that is what I have tonight. I didn't want to go into too much detail as I know you've seen this a few times, but for those of you who haven't, please feel free to ask questions. I have more slides later of what you have in your submission to help answer any questions that you might have. And do you want me to bring this up now? Or? That's fine. Okay, is there uh, anyone here who wishes to make public comment on the issue of completeness? This is not in support of or against the project, just whether the application is complete. Okay, seeing none. Um, does anybody on the board have any questions about the completeness of this? Do the two members who this is new to have any issues with being asked to judge on the completeness? Uh, I would say we have um, sent people away for not submitting things on time. So, um, however, that was a uh, project that we were going to talk about completion and then actually approve in the same time. So we at least have time to look through this. Um, I guess uh, the rest of the board has seen the complete package in the, in the past, presuming it hasn't changed, and Maureen is vouching for its completeness here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of wavering, to be honest. Well, you don't have, you actually don't have to vote for completeness, right? He can deem, he can vote for it to yeah. be complete. Yeah, you don't, don't feel we like- We won't feel, I'm, I'm telling you that my review 
not having been here before, I, I spent a lot of time making a list of everything we had before, and it looks like everything that we had before has now been submitted. But that you don't have to take my statement for that. You can make your own call. Want a motion? Yeah. Motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Patrick Tinsman for reapproval of a mixed use office, restaurant, eight apartment development located at 1226 Shore Road be deemed complete. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? One opposed. Great, okay. Um, so does anybody want to make a motion uh, to table? Go ahead, you, you, you started it. No, are there any, are there any questions that anyone has? Oh, okay, about? sorry. <laughs> does anybody yeah, have any questions? Well, well, Carol Ann looks for hers. I just, um, I know one of the big things that we had already looked at this was that building B, so I'm happy with the applicant for making the uh, uh, necessary requirements that kind of uh, got everything hung up in the first place. And I appreciate um, them going to the town and working it out with the code enforcement officer, which I think was the hang up. Um, When I was reviewing this earlier today, <laughs> um, the parking space calculations, I found two different numbers. On one sheet it was five and on one sheet it was six. And I now I can't find where my differences were. But now it's six spaces for building B and 38 or 36 for building A. 36 for A asking two shared and six for B asking one shared. Okay. Just the, the total number of spaces on the site have never changed. Okay. It's the number of shared spaces that are being requested. Okay. And just to comment on that, given the what has been represented for the limited uses of B, um, I'd be fine with shared spaces. I just want to make sure I have the right number in my head. So. Okay. I'll do it. <laughs> I think if Jim says something, everybody hears it. So. <laughs> Motion to schedule a public hearing be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Patrick Tinsman for reapproval of a mixed office restaurant, eight apartments, development located at 1226 Shore Road be tabled to the regular May 21st, 2019 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing will be held. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, next item is 69 Beach Bluff Terrace Private Access Way Reapproval. Peter Weir is requesting reapproval of a private access way permit for a new lot located behind 69 Beach Bluff Terrace. The application was originally approved on December 19th, 2017. Extensions were granted on April 23rd, 2018 and September 18th, 2018. 
The approval expired on December 17, 2018 when the plan was not recorded. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 1979, private access ways. Um, so why don't you go ahead and summarize the project, introduce yourself. Good evening, thank you. My name is Jim Logan. I am uh, the wetland scientist of record for this project, also soil scientist, as well as the site evaluator that prepared the septic system design for Mr. Weir on this lot. Uh, tonight I'm here with JP, who is uh, a representative from Dustin Roma's company, the engineering firm that prepared the rest of the plans. And uh, I hope the board will bear with me because I'm not the computer guy. Uh, I'm the soil guy that twists an auger well. And, and any technical questions hopefully JP can address. Um, as the chair suggested, this is uh, a project previously approved by the board. Uh, we trust uh, for this go around that we have made a complete submission to my understanding. Uh, it's the submission was deemed by Maureen, I think this time around to be uh, more complete in its, in its scope. Uh, I'm trusting that we've accomplished that task. Um, assuming as well, since that's the case, that, that the previously submitted information, which was approved by a previous board, understanding that there are two new board members, uh, that hopefully that information is in, in good shape. Uh, in addition to the original information, I believe there was quite a bit of additional legal information that was prepared and provided uh, to address the easements and so forth. Uh, some of that deliberation took place after that uh, official uh, original approval. Um, so in, we're in the hopes that you'll be able to find the application complete and perhaps we uh, could move to a public hearing if we're lucky. If you care to have some background, uh, in 2017, uh, I mapped the wetlands out there. There is a, a critical wetland one offsite on the adjacent Robinson Woods. Uh, uh, due to the, the sort of offsite nature of that and the difficulty of mapping that, I, uh, I obtained uh, a, an oversight and overview by the state soil scientist, David Roke. Uh, his memo was in the original submission packet. Uh, he uh, helped establish that beginning point of measurement for the 250 foot wide critical wetland setback uh, that is depicted on the, the plan. Uh, the proposed building site is completely outside of that. Uh, also on this lot is a small <clears throat> drainage swale, a stream uh, that was uh, previously determined by DEP to be a Natural Resources Protection Act stream that uh, would typically get a 75 foot required setback, uh, part of our earlier proposal and what is still currently uh, approved by DEP was a reduction. Uh, from that 75 foot required setback. I believe we've reduced it uh, and gotten uh, the nod from DEP to be as close as 40. Yes. Uh, and that 40 foot is applying to the edge of the uh, lawn or graded area and not the corner of the dwelling. The dwelling will in fact be further than that from the stream. Uh, adjacent to that small stream is a small piece of resource protection to wetlands. Uh, and we have uh, maintained a buffer to that as well. Uh, there is a line of uh, large stones to be placed at the edge of the proposed building area uh, to make clear to any, uh, either the current owner or any future owner, uh, the limits of where that grading needs to stay to maintain that buffer to the RP2 wetland and the stream. Okay. Questions from the board? This is just on completeness, right? Yeah, it's just on completeness. Is that your presentation? Do you have anything yeah, else? That, that's about what I have for tonight. If the board has more questions, I'm, I'm available. Well, actually, I do have something that may be considered completeness. There was an, a letter in here from Portland Water District um, about public fire protection that says, it is your responsibility to contact the capables of the fire department and ensure that the project is adequately served by existing and our proposed hydrants. Is there, did I miss, is there actually some letter or communication that's submitted? Could I help? 
that's uh, yeah, Maureen. Maureen. I, I want to suggest that that is a standard language in, in all Port and Water District letters, and that this was reviewed by the fire chief, and he did not request a new hydrant be installed, which means there's a hydrant somewhere within a thousand feet of this existing property. Yeah, I actually did see that. It was like okay. 700 and yeah. some odd feet. 560 okay. feet from the third. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, that, all right, that's fine. Any questions on completeness? Okay. Is there any member of the pu com, uh, public here who has a comment on the completeness of this? All right, seeing none, are there any mo is there a motion? I have a motion. Uh, motion for completeness. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted in the facts presented to the application of Peter Weir for a private access permit for a new lot located at the rear of 69 Beach Bluff Terrace be deemed complete. Second. It's Dan's turn. <laughs> <laughs> Thank any discussion? All in, in favor? Yes. It's unanimous. Okay, because this is an expedited review, we are going to move directly to the public comment. Uh, I'm sorry, public hearing. Yeah, is there any member of the public who wishes to speak on this? Okay, seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Um, and we open the uh, discussion to the board. Do any of you have any questions? Just, uh, this is for reapproval. I remember being, I was a member of the board when we did go over this and I remember the site walk was very involved and the applicant was very involved at that time and we approved it at that time. So my opinion hasn't changed on this and I'm supporting it. Ditto. I noted that uh, Steve Harding's only comment was that you've included his You've yeah. made the update re relative to the one comment he made back in December of 2018. Right. So, and I also was on the board at the time, went through the site walk and all the reviews, and uh, there are no changes to this other than the ones that were requested as condition, any potential condition of approval, and so I'm fine. Okay, anybody wish to make a motion? I'll get a motion. Um, <laughs> motion for approval, findings of fact. Peter Weir is requesting re number one, Peter Weir is requesting reapproval of a private access permit for a new lot located behind 69 Beach Bluff Terrace, which requires compliance with section 19-7 private access ways. Two, the proposed lot shall be improved with only one dwelling unit and related accessory building and uses. Number three, the private access way shall be located within a dedicated 30-foot wide right of way. Number four, the sub base shall be constructed of gravel meeting MDOT specification 703-06 type D with a depth of at least 15 inches and having a width of at least 18 feet. Number five, the travel way shall be constructed with a minimum of three inches of crushed gravel having a width of at least 14 feet with the remaining width of a gravel based loam and loamed and seeded. Number six, within 10 feet of the edge of the street paving, the ex access way shall be paved with three inches of asphalt paving, a maximum grade within the first 50 feet of the edge and the street paving shall not exceed 5%. Pavement radius at the intersection with the street shall be 20 feet. Number seven, gutter drainage along the street shall not be allowed to sheet across the face of the intersection and the proposed design will keep drainage from the private access way from running into the public street. Number eight, a turnaround meets the requirement of the fire chief. Number nine, the access way is located so that the site distance conforms to the requirements of the subdivision ordinance. Number 10, a private access way shall serve only one lot. Number 11, the planning board has not reduced the requirements of section 19-7-9D4 uh, to a lesser standard. Number 12, adequate disposal of sewage shall be provided as evidenced by submission of a completed HHE 200 form. Number nine, uh, 13, 
green, the uh, a building development is depicted wherein the house and accessory buildings will be located on a lot demonstrating conformance with the setback requirements of the district in which it is located and any natural constraints and that the house site will be buffered from abutting residential properties. Number 14, the applica application substantially complies with section 19-7-9, private access ways, and 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Peter Weir for a private access way permit for a new lot located at the rear of 69 Beach Bluff Terrace be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the following deeds and agreements be submitted in the form acceptable to the town attorney and signed by the applicant. That is a road maintenance agreement, a rights of access for parcel B over the private access way on parcel A, a deed conveying Thompson Road to parcel B, an emergency access deed over the turnaround to the town. And number two, that there be no issuance of a building permit or alteration of the site until the plans and materials have been revised to satisfy the above conditions in the plan has been signed by the planning board and recorded in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much, board members. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Last Joe. and the most. I'm going to recuse myself from this item as one of the owners of the property on which the well is situated. Okay. Objection. Anybody object? Objection. Okay, one, two. All right, we still have a quorum left, right? We have yep. five members left, so. Okay. Good. Um, Next item, the well site plan amendments. Jason Williams is requesting amendments to the site plan approval for the well, a 44 seat farm to table restaurant located at 19 Wells Road to provide a public sewer connection, add a dumpster and add a porch. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Okay, so can you introduce yourself and summarize the project? Hello, my name is Jason Williams. I'm the chef owner at the Well Jordan's Farm. Um, I'm here to ask for approval for three amendments to my existing site plan. Um, the first being a town sewer connect. So if you can see on the plans, it's a uh, 245 foot pipe from the restroom to the sewer connect on Wells Road. Um, it's gravity fed sewer connect. Um, done by LP Murray and Sons. Who's familiar with that? Um, the Y connect that leads to the restaurant so that I can add a grease trap and the necessary, um, the necessary stuff to attach to the town sewer that way. The second amendment would be a wraparound porch um, on the existing porch. As you can see, um, it would be adding uh, 16 feet from the existing porch and then back 20 feet as well as, so it kind of covers the, the wraps around the, the existing trailer restaurant. Um, and then the third thing is just a dumpster down in the employee parking lot um, that would be in a wooden enclosure of a six by 12 wooden enclosure for a dumpster. So that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Is it a covered porch or a deck? Covered porch. Okay. Um, so just just as if you have pictures of the existing, we're going to try to match it. The same architects or the same uh, builders are going to do the work. The same seamless metal roof. Um, okay. Colors should all be the same. Okay. Is there anybody here to make a public comment about... I'm sorry, are you done? I'm done, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is there anyone here to make a public comment regarding completeness of the application? <laughs> okay, seeing none. Uh, does the board have any questions? It's a screen and porch, correct? Correct. Okay. Dan? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, um, so you're putting in a, a sewer connection. What do you have there today? 
Uh, right now, it's gray water that we pump. Okay. So, Great. yeah, it would be a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. Do I have a motion for completeness? Yes. Jim. Oh. Oh. A motion for the board to consider completeness be ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jason Williams for amendments to the previously approved site plan for the well, a 44 seat restaurant located at 19 Wells Road to connect the restaurant to public sewer, add a dumpster and replace 12 picnic table seats with, a 10, with 10 porch seats be deemed complete. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Um, I'll open the meeting to public hearing. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on behalf of the applicant? No supporter. Not, not no? a chance, Trina. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Seeing none, the hearing is closed. The, and... Uh, Turn it over to the board. Does anyone have any comments or questions? So you're getting rid of a couple of the picnic tables? Exactly. All right, and then the seat's gonna, and what's on the porch? Uh, I'll put like bar seats, we could get a bar counter like it has right now, just to make up for the, the seats, but that way we won't have to worry about bugs and rain and all that other fun stuff. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Anybody else? All right, we got a motion. Oh. Dan. You want to do it? Oh, wait. No, no. Oh. Hold on, Dan. Maureen. Did everybody note that the applicant is asking for a change in the location oh, of the yes. dumpster? Are you asking for a change or an option to put uh, it in either no, place? Spin it. Just so he's looking for a change. Yeah, a change. So, and this little sheet, up, it's like way down in the corner right here. Right now, the um, dumpster is. Uh, perpendicular to Wells Road, and he's looking to put it kind of diagonal to Wells Road. And you can't see on this photocopy, but you can see in the, the plans that he submitted, that's a, a lined parking area. So it's it's basically on the corner of the gra of the gravel base of the parking area. It's not taking up a parking space, and in theory, you can probably service it by a truck. Does that make sense? Is is it angled like that to get a bank better angle for the truck to come in exactly. and grab it? Yeah, so they don't have to come into the property too far, so it doesn't have to put a ton of gravel down in an area. And is that is is uh, can you see it from the road? Um, not once it grows in, you can't really see it from the road. It's but supposed to be. It's going to be screened with a stockade fence. Yeah. Oh, there'll I'm be, sorry. Uh, there'll okay. be a wooden fence surrounding it, so you won't be able to see it. And just so, because I know Wells Road pretty well, um, once summer comes, that's pretty, uh, there's a good buffer between those that you almost can't even see into that back employee lot. Exactly. Sure. Maureen. So if someone was going to make a motion, they'd probably want to somehow make sure the motion made clear that you're accepting the the revised dumpster location. Don't look at me. Dan, <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you get that? Pressure's on. Yeah. So, so the question to the board, to the board is, are we going to um, accept the revised dumpster location at an angle? Yeah. Uh, does, does anybody have a problem with that? I don't. No. I don't. No? No. So yes. So, do you want to make a motion? Motion for approval. Findings of fact. Number one, Jason Williams is requesting amendments to the site plan approval for the well, a 44 seat farm to table restaurant located at 19 Wells Road to provide a public sewer connection, add a dumpster, and add a porch, which requires review for compliance with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Number two, the site plan amendments reflects the natural capabilities of the site to support the development. 
Number three, access to the development will be on roads with adequate capacity to support the traffic generated by the development. Access into and within the site will be safe. Parking will be provided in accordance with section 19-7-8, off-site parking. Number four, the site plan amendments do provide for a system of pedestrian ways within the development. Number five, the site plan amendments do provide for adequate collection and discharge of stormwater. Number six, the site plan amendments will not cause soil erosion based on the erosion plan submitted. Number seven, this restaurant will be provided with an adequate quantity and quality of potable water. Number eight, the restaurant will provide for the adequate sewage disposal. Number nine, the restaurant will be provided with access to utilities. Number 10, the site plan amendments will not locate store discharge materials harmful to surface or groundwaters. Number 11, the site plan amendments will provide for adequate disposal of solid waste. Number 12, the site plan amendments will not adversely affect the water quality or shoreline of any adjacent water body. Number 13, the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. Number 14, the restaurant will provide for adequate exterior lighting without excessive illumination. Number 15, the site plan amendments will provide a vegetative buffer throughout and around the site and screening as needed. Number 16, the restaurant will not substantially increase noise levels and cause human discomfort. Number 17, storage of the exterior materials on the site that may be visible to the public will be screened by fencing or landscaping. Number three, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jason Williams for amendments to the previously approved site plan <coughs> for the well, a 44 seat restaurant located at 19 wells to connect the restaurant to public sewer, add a dumpster and replace 12 picnic table seats with 10 porch seats be approved subject to the following condition. Number one, that the plans be revised to address the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated April 10th, 2019. Can I make a friendly Please. amendment? Please. The second number three be amended to number 18. It's the one on the, this page right here. The application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations. You just jump from 17 to three and you called it three. Oh, accepted. Okay. okay. So I, I would second. You're seconding, okay. And then, um, can I offer a friendly amendment? Yes. Thank you. Uh, you add an additional condition that the, uh, the, the dumpster be sited at the angle. Um, how can I identify this, Maureen? As submitted. As submitted. Absolutely. That makes sense? Yes. Okay. I'm okay with that too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, Can't wait for the first unfriendly amendment we ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any further discussion on the motion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, guys. If, if you're no longer going to be BYOB, you might want to notify people so before the summer. Say there? Oh, yeah, it's on there. <laughs> All right. Does anyone want to? I move we adjourn. Thank you. Any seconds? Second. All in favor? <laughs> 
Everybody seconded, right? All those in favor. All in favor. There you go. All opposed? <laughs> All right.